Hello guys, welcome back to your English manual. This is the chapter number one of our new series, Verb Tenses. In this series, we'll talk about each one of the verb tenses of English, from the simplest ones to the most advanced ones. And the first verb tense that we'll talk about is the one used in today's motivational quote, the present simple. And to start in this first chapter, we'll take a look at its structure. Shall we? The affirmatives in the present simple are very easy. For the persons I, you, we, and they, all you need to do is put the verb without the to. For example, let's see the verb to eat. When we conjugate it, all we need to do is say I eat, you eat, we eat, and they eat. Simple, right? Much simpler than Portuguese, that every person needs a different verb conjugation. But let's practice more. Let's see the verb to do. Always say after us to practice, okay? I do, you do, we do, they do. Now with the verb to study. I study, you study, we study, they study. Easy, isn't it? This part doesn't change. Well, but there is a case in which there is a different verb conjugation, when we are talking about the third person singular. Remember our last video in which we talked about each person? If you don't remember, check this video out, okay? It will help to understand what we'll say now. Well, the rule we're going to talk about today is only for the third person singular. In other words, he, she, or it. So, without further ado, let's see what will change in the third person singular. What will happen is that the main verbs will gain the suffix s, es, or ies in the affirmative. It is important that you understand one thing. Unlike Portuguese, these suffixes do not indicate plural, so much so that you, we, they don't use s in the verb, remember? Let's see the same examples we were using. With the verb to eat, it is he eats, she eats, it eats. With the verb to do, we have he does, she does, it does. Finally, the verb to study. He studies, she studies, it studies. But then you may ask, and how will I know when to use s, when to use es, and when to use ies? Well, we don't think you necessarily need to know all these rules. Probably just by using them, you will know when to use each one. But since you may be curious and since we don't like to give half the information, we will tell you the rules. So, the general rule is, when we are talking about a third person singular, the suffix s is added to the end of the verb. Attention! This is not plural. Because of Portuguese, we tend to think that this S means that the verb is in plural. But remember, this is the third person singular. This means that there will only be this change in the third person singular. In all the other cases, even in plural, nothing changes. Look, I like, you like, he likes. She likes, it likes, we like, you like, and they like. See? Don't confuse them. Well then, coming back. 
This general rule applies to almost all verb endings. Examples. I like, he likes. I change, he changes. I want, he wants. I come, he comes. I read, she reads. I know, she knows. I call, she calls. I draw, she draws. I open, it opens. I leave, it leaves. I see, it sees. I close, it closes. However, when the verb ends in O, S, S, H, C, H, X, or Z, we add ES instead of only S. Examples. I go, he goes. I do, he does. Pay close attention to this one. I kiss, he kisses. I miss, he misses. I wash, she washes. I fish, she fishes. I watch, she watches. I catch, she catches. I fix, it fixes. I relax, it relaxes. I buzz, it buzzes. I quiz, it quizzes. Finally, when the verb ends in consonant plus Y, just take the Y out and add IES. Examples. I study, he studies. I try, he tries. I cry, she cries. I hurry, she hurries. I fly, it flies. I dry, it dries. Oh, please notice that we said consonant plus Y. This means that if the verb ends in vowel plus Y, it follows the general rule. Just add the S. Examples. I play, he plays. I enjoy, she enjoys. I buy, it buys. The only verb that changes a lot in the third person singular is the verb to have. If it were like the other verbs and follow the general rule, it would be haves. But this doesn't exist. The verb to have is the only one that's different. It becomes has because of how it was conjugated in Old English. So with this verb, we say I have, she has. Alright, so we're finished with the affirmatives. Now we just need the negatives and the interrogatives. Then you might think, oh, but that's easy. If I want to make a question, I just say, you study, right? Eh, no. You see, the problem is that verbs such as eat, drink, study, work, simply indicate what happened. And don't get me wrong, this is very important. So important that they are called main verbs. But the thing is that they only know how to do this, nothing else. If you want to negate, to ask, to change something in the meaning of the sentence, they can't do it by themselves. But then you may ask, well, so how am I going to do it then? Since the main verbs are not able to do it by themselves, they will need some assistance, some help. And that's where these so-called auxiliary verbs come in. And what is an auxiliary verb, you ask? It's a verb that helps. Okay, but how does it help? Well, in simpler words, uh, they help the main verbs to express themselves correctly. Let's not dwell too long on this topic, but for now, out of all the cases we are talking about, we can say that the auxiliary verbs help put the sentence in the negative and the interrogative. 
and the auxiliary verb used in the present simple is do. So let's move on. Let's start with our first example, I eat. Every time you want to put a verb in the negative in English, you need to add not. In all verb tenses with all main verbs, you will do this. However, remember that the main verb doesn't know how to do anything. It doesn't even know how to get not to be near it. And not has to be near the main verb, right? Are you going to say, I eat cheese not? No, right? So, who comes in to save the day? Exactly, the auxiliary verb, which in the present simple is do. It shows up, stands before the main verb, and takes the not to be near it. So, the order ends up being the same as in Portuguese. I do not eat. Oh, very important. This do has no translation at all. It's just there to help the main verb, okay? But to facilitate our lives and make our speech more fluid, you can connect the auxiliary verb and not. So, in this case, we can say do plus not equals don't. So, you can either say I do not eat or I don't eat. They both mean the same thing. Let's practice. I do not eat. I don't eat. You do not eat. You don't eat. We do not eat. We don't eat. They do not eat. They don't eat. Another example. I do not do. I don't do. You do not do. You don't do. We do not do. We don't do. They do not do. They don't do. Now with the verb to study. I do not study, I don't study, you do not study, you don't study, we do not study, we don't study, they do not study, they don't study. Easy, right? Okay, but remember that in the third person singular, we need to add the suffix s to the main verb in the affirmative. Well, when we are in the negative, the auxiliary verb do shows up, right? When the auxiliary verb appears, it will help the main verb in everything it can. It will not be enough to help the main verb with just the not. It will not let the main verb make any effort. It's a real gentleman. So, it will even help carry the suffix as. It goes like this. Is that suffix as heavy? Let me carry that for you. Then the auxiliary verb do takes the suffix as to itself. And do you remember the rules we talked about? When a verb ending in O takes the suffix, what does it get? Yes. Then the auxiliary verb do becomes thus. Then the sentence becomes he does not eat. But do you remember that it's possible to connect the auxiliary verb with not? Here you can do the same thing. Does plus not becomes doesn't. Therefore, it's possible to say both he does not eat and he doesn't eat. They both mean the same thing. Let's practice. 
He does not eat. He doesn't eat. She does not eat. She doesn't eat. It does not eat. It doesn't eat. Now with to do. He does not do. He doesn't do. She does not do. She doesn't do. It does not do. It doesn't do. Finally, to study. He does not study. He doesn't study. She does not study. She doesn't study. It does not study. It doesn't study. Is everything okay so far? So let's go to the interrogatives. Now, all that's left is the interrogatives, so let's learn to ask questions. Well, remember that the main verb doesn't know how to do anything else? That means it also doesn't know how to turn an affirmative into a question. So, it also needs some help here. And how do you ask a question, you ask? Simple. All that it takes is the auxiliary verb to appear at the beginning before the subject. Compare these two sentences, you eat and do you eat? The first one is that affirmative that we had already seen. The second one is the interrogative. Did you see that the only difference is that do appeared before you? That's it! In English, this indicates a question in the present simple, just like that. And since it's just that, now we only have to practice more. Let's go! Do I eat? Do you eat? Do we eat? Do they eat? Now with to do. Do I do? Do you do? Do we do? Do they do? Finally, with to study. Do I study? Do you study? Do we study? Do they study? Great, but those questions are too simple, right? Let's at least add a what, a where, something, right? It's the easiest thing in the world. Look. See the question, do you study? Let's add a where at the beginning. So it will be, where do you study? Did you see that the only thing I did was put the where at the beginning? The rest is the same as the previous question. Another example, let's put a what in the question, do you do? So it will be, what do you do? Finally, we will add when in the question, do you eat? It will be, when do you eat? Easy peasy, right? Well, we also have the negative interrogatives. And what are those? They are questions that we ask already with a negative in them. For example, você não come? How do we ask that in English? Super simple. You already know how to make the negative you do not eat or you don't eat, right? Since now it's a negative question, what's left to do? The auxiliary verb needs to come to the beginning to indicate that it is a question. Honestly, the best analogy I've ever seen about this is... Imagine that not is a small child. He actually wants to cross the beginning before the subject, but he cannot cross alone. When he goes hand in hand with the gentleman do, fine. The two of them go together, contracted. The negative question becomes, don't you eat? But if do goes alone, not will stay where he is, because he cannot cross that alone. 
So the negative question becomes, do you not eat? Both ways are valid. So we can say both, do you not eat? And don't you eat? Simple, right? Let's practice more. First with to eat. Don't I eat? Do I not eat? Don't you eat? Do you not eat? Don't we eat? Do we not eat? Don't they eat? Do they not eat? Now with to do. Don't I do? Do I not do? Don't you do? Do you not do? Don't we do? Do we not do? Don't they do? Do they not do? Finally, with to study. Don't I study? Do I not study? Don't you study? Do you not study? Don't we study? Do we not study? Don't they study? Do they not study? Then you may ask, okay, but are these two questions the same? Well, that second kind of question is not so common. It is a little more formal and it usually conveys an idea of emphasis or surprise as if you did not expect something you've heard, like, I don't want chocolate. Why, do you not like chocolate? So the most common question is still the first one, okay? Oh, yeah. Just like with the interrogatives, it's also possible to add a what, a where, a when, etc. Let's see some examples. If we add a what to the question, don't you eat or do you not eat, we can have both what don't you eat and what do you not eat. If we add why to the question, don't you do or do you not do, we may have both why don't you do and why do you not do. Another example, if we add when to the question don't you study or do you not study, we can have both when don't you study and when do you not study. Not difficult at all, right? Now we will see the questions with he, she, and it. Remember that you have to put the suffix as with these three persons, right? But look, do you remember that to ask a question, the auxiliary verb needs to help? If it helps, it's because it shows up. If it shows up, it takes everything, remember? So who is the one who will take the suffix as in the interrogatives with he, she, and it? Exactly, the auxiliary verb, do. Let's compare with the question with you using the example, do you eat? With he, do will take the suffix as and become does. So it would be, does he eat? Easy, right? Let's practice more. Does he eat? Does she eat? Does it eat? With the verb to do. Does he do? Does she do? Does it do? Finally, with to study. Does he study? Does she study? Does it study? And of course, you can also put words like what, where, when, and so on. Remember the question, does he eat? Now let's add what at the beginning. It will be, what does he eat? Easy, right? More practice. Putting why before does he study, we get why does he study? Now putting how before does she do, we have how does she do? And also putting when before does it eat, we have when does it eat. Well, now all that's missing is the negative questions, right? 
Just like with I, you, we, they, we have two possible forms. The only difference is that since it is in the third person singular, the auxiliary verb do, we take the suffix as and become thus. Anyway, let's remember that example. Don't you eat? Or do you not eat? How is it going to be with he? Exactly. We can say both doesn't he eat? And does he not eat? Simple, right? Now let's practice. With the verb to eat. Doesn't he eat? Does he not eat? Doesn't she eat? Does she not eat? Doesn't it eat? Does he not eat? Now with to do. Doesn't he do? Does he not do? Doesn't she do? Does she not do? Doesn't it do? Does it not do? And finally, with the verb to study. Doesn't he study? Does he not study? Doesn't she study? Does she not study? Doesn't it study? Does it not study? And, of course, to finish everything, we can just put a what, where, when, etc. Right? So, let's see some examples. If we put what before doesn't he eat or does he not eat, we can have both what doesn't he eat and what does he not eat. Another example. If we add how to the question doesn't she do, or does she not do, we can have both how doesn't she do and how does she not do. Just one more example. If we put where in the question doesn't it study or does it not study, we can have both where doesn't it study and where does it not study. Super easy, right? The pattern is always the same. Well, there is something else we need to talk about. Remember the explanation of the beginning of the video? The third person can be anybody. We don't necessarily have to say he or she. If I say, for example, my father plays soccer, I am talking about a third person in singular. The hint is to think that my father is he. So, in English, it would be my father plays soccer because it's as if it were he plays soccer let's see more examples with people your brother speaks german your brother is he her teacher knows how to play chess her teacher is he or she some negatives our friend doesn't eat a lot. Our friend is he or she. The actress doesn't have problems. The actress is she. Any interrogatives. Does Maria like cars? Maria is she. And does Pedro play video games? Pedro is he. And just so you don't get confused, remember that we are only talking about the third person singular. That is, if we are speaking in plural, we do not put the suffix s. For example, notice the difference between these sentences. Your brother studies a lot. Your brother is he. And your brothers study a lot. Your brothers are they. See? The same goes for things. It only represents things, animals in singular. For example, my dog doesn't eat food. My dog is it. And my dogs don't eat food. My dogs are they. 
The same goes for interrogatives. Um, does his sister play well? His sister is she. And do his sisters play well? His sisters are they. All right? Another thing we find important to talk about is the short answers. Do you know what that is? The name itself gives it away. If someone comes to you and asks, do you like soccer? You can answer that question with a yes or a no. But if you say just yes or just no, it may be a bit abrupt, you know? Sometimes it's not very polite. It may sound like you don't want to continue the conversation. Then you think, so I'm going to say, yes, I like. But remember that the main verbs can do anything by themselves? Yeah, they can also do this kind of answer by themselves. So, for a change, who comes to save the day? Exactly, the auxiliary verb. Therefore, to be more polite, ideally, it's always better to answer with the so-called short answers. Their structure is quite simple. Yes or no, plus subject, plus auxiliary verb. Since we are talking about the present simple, the auxiliary verb is do, right? So, if someone asks you, do you like soccer? Your answer might be, yes, I do. Or you can answer no. In this case, in the negative, you will contract saying, no, I don't. Just like we said back there, we only use the non-contracted form in the negative when we want to emphasize it, like, no, I do not. Oh, and of course, if we are talking about the third person singular, the auxiliary verb also gets the suffix s. Don't forget. For example, does she speak English? Can be answered with, yes, she does, or no, she doesn't. Just remember that in order to make the answer short, the most common way is to answer with only I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. For example, if the question is, does your father study French? Simply answer, yes, he does, or no, he doesn't. Don't answer, yes, my father does, nor no, my father doesn't. It's not ideal, okay? The last thing we're going to talk about is different clauses. Remember what a clause is? If not, take a quick look at our video number two, okay? We'll also leave a link in the description. What matters is, there can only be one suffix per clause, and that part per clause is very important. For example, if I say, João likes English, we only have one clause, so we only put one third-person singular suffix, right? If I say, João likes to study English, the second verb is in the infinitive, to study, right? Since this verb is just completing the idea of the verb to like, that is, it's saying what João likes. So we only put one suffix s. And this happens even if I put other verbs in the infinitive later. Look, João likes to study English, to play soccer, and to dance. We have the infinitives to study, to play, and to dance, all of them completing the verb to like, since they are saying what João likes, right? So far, no problems. But what if I don't put a verb in the infinitive? If I say, for example, that Pedro does three things, like English, study the piano, and work at night. Now, we have two more verbs, and neither of them completes the verb to like. Here, we have separate clauses. The subject is still the same, Pedro, but we don't have to keep repeating it with the other verbs not to get repetitive. 
but it is as if the subject were there. However, since they are separate clauses, each one has its own third-person rule. So, each one receives its own suffix s. Therefore, the sentence is Pedro likes English, studies the piano, and works at night. The same happens when we have different subjects. Look at this example. He wants juice, but she prefers water. Here we have different clauses, right? Then each one will have its own suffix s. And it doesn't matter if I put infinitives later. He wants to drink juice, but she prefers to drink water. One more example to make sure. My brother works here, and my sister studies there. To finish, let's give the answer to today's challenge. What is the problem with this sentence? One of my friends don't eat chocolate. Well, the mistake is in the auxiliary verb. Since we are talking about one of my friends, we are talking about only one person in singular. So we're talking about a male friend of mine, he, or a female friend of mine, she. Therefore, the auxiliary verb should be doesn't since it's the one used with he and she. The correct sentence would be one of my friends doesn't eat chocolate. And, well, if we were talking about more than one friend, two, for example, then we would have plural. So, we would actually use don't, since doesn't is only used for the third person singular, right? For example, we would say Two of my friends don't eat chocolate. Got it? Well, that's it, people. In this video, we talked about the most important aspect of the verb tense present simple. Since it was a lot of information, although many things are similar, we recommend that you practice a lot not to make any mistakes, okay? Because believe me, this is something that most English students certainly have problems with. So, to ensure that everything is understood, practice a lot that in time it will become automatic. If you need to, come back to this video and watch it again to answer your questions. If you still haven't understood something, you can ask in the comments and we will answer as soon as possible, okay? As always, we left a list of exercises in the description of the video. We hope that you guys learned and liked it. If so, leave a like and share this video. You can help us help more people this way. See you next video. Bye!